I, I really, really miss her. Debbie Kuhn died in 2008. An inquest found she suffered from a head injury, but her niece said health care staff first presumed something else. Every single one of them looked at her and saw her as a drunk Indian that needed to sober up. And she didn't get the proper assessment. She didn't get the proper treatment she needed that could save her life. One example of what a new report calls widespread racism in the health care system, which is leading to worse outcomes for Indigenous patients. Literally, the report includes multiple comments that I heard of people saying, I would rather die and not get the needed health care treatment than go back into that system and get it. A former judge was asked to investigate after BC hospital staff were accused of playing a game which involved guessing the blood alcohol content of Indigenous patients. She found those allegations were unsubstantiated, but heard about plenty of other problems. Thousands were surveyed. Among the findings, 84% of Indigenous people reported experiencing racism or discrimination in the health care system. More than half of Indigenous health care workers said they experienced the same while on the job. The report laid out 24 recommendations. It called for better support for those who speak up about racism. It said there needs to be more training and schools should do more to recruit Indigenous students into health care programs. If we can change uh, the way the system is currently working and bring anti-racism measures into place, then hopefully we'll see an improvement in health status of Indigenous people. The BC government offered an apology today. Racism is toxic for people and it's toxic for care. Officials promise to move quickly on the recommendations, particularly because lives are at stake now, as the pandemic and the opioid crisis are disproportionately affecting Indigenous people. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Vancouver.